Hi folks, we have another Clean Water Systems instructional video for you today. Uh, today we're going to set up our non-proportional J-Pro 22 chlorinator pump setup. Uh, this uh, system will work both for chlorine and for hydrogen peroxide. So, having everything unboxed, we have our 15 gallon tank, we have our pump, we have two types of tubing, one is a harder tubing, there was another one that's a softer tubing. We have our weight. And we have our foot valve and the injection check valve. So the system we're setting up today, these pumps will work off of 110 or 220 volt. Uh, they come with a 110 plug. If you're going to go 220, uh, we recommend going ahead and cutting the plug off, either putting a 220 plug in or wire it up directly, uh, hardwire it into your uh, well, well pump. So the first thing we're going to do is mount the pump. Uh, we recommend mounting these pumps directly on top of the tank. Uh, the shortest distance for that suction hose coming up uh, is better to keep your prime. Uh, you can put it on a shelf above, but you don't want it higher than 60 inches above the tank. So this is a new tank here with our childproof cap on it. And we've actually got a tank here in the shop that I've already drilled. Uh, what you need is just a couple of mounting holes for the pump with some wood screws and some clearance holes for the 3 8 tubing. You're going to want two holes. You're going to want one that's going to have your suction hose all the way down into the solution and the second hole is going to be for your kicker port. One other thing I did want to mention, uh, it's very important that you use surge protection uh, on these units. They're very susceptible to uh, power spikes, um, and that unfortunately is not covered by the factory warranty, so you want to make sure you use surge protection. Okay, so we've got our holes drilled here. So what we're going to do is go ahead and put the suction uh, hose portion in. So what you want to do is take some of your soft tubing, and you want to measure from the bottom of the tank up to the bottom of this fitting here. Subtract two inches from that and also two inches for your foot valve. So whatever your dimension is up to here, subtract four inches. That's going to put this approximately uh, two inches above the bottom of the tank. Another important thing is, is that you want to make sure this is vertical. This foot valve has a check valve in here, and if it's off horizontal or to the side, uh, it could uh, not function properly and you won't get the, the uh, keep your prime on the pump. So make sure this is vertical and uh, use your soft tubing and we're going to just uh, go ahead put our weight on through the hose then we're going to unthread this little cap here and slide the cap through okay so you have this little barb here the hose needs to be directly come all the way up to the shoulder here these won't stay primed if they're not done properly, if you have air leaks through here. So see, this is not correct. You want to get, make sure you keep this all the way up to the shoulder like that. Once you have that up in there, go ahead and hand tighten this fitting. It does not require any kind of thread tape or thread lube on this fitting. It's just hand tight and get it good and tight on there. So now you have your weight with your foot valve. And we're going to go ahead and drop this down in bring it up through our hole. Okay? So now we're going to do the same thing on the bottom of the pump. This is your suction port. And it works the same way. Uh, if you need to soften this tubing up to get it, make it easier to put it on there, you can use a hair dryer or you can use uh, just hot water. But again, you want to make sure it's all the way up there on that shoulder. Hold it into place. And tighten that down okay so now you can see this is in there it's straight down we're about two inches from the bottom so that's a good setup and that's right where our pumps going to be now we're going to go ahead and hook up a, the tube to our kicker port so basically this kicker port here is used for priming the pump and what we'll do, uh, once we get the pump primed, you want to leave this cracked open slightly. It allows you to keep the pump primed all the time. So what this tube is, take your, another piece of your soft tubing, 
and we're just going to run it down into the tank above the water level and again this has the same kind of fitting make sure you get that guy all the way up to the shoulder and hand tighten it again none of these fittings here need any thread tape or anything okay now we're going to go ahead and install our injection check valve so these injection check valves are actually made for up to a four inch T um, so what we recommend on these is go ahead if you have a three-quarter system go ahead and adapt up to a one inch T with one of these inserts you can put in and what you end up with then is you end up with this probe directly in the water line here as your water's flowing by you definitely want that it can be up a little higher it can be as long as it'll drip down into it it can be up like close to the top or it could be down close to the bottom if it's too long for what you're trying to uh, put in your fitting this can always be trimmed you can cut it with a hacksaw uh, trim it up to where you want it but what you want is you want that thing installed down into the water line so we do recommend uh, using this uh, nice schedule 81 inch T with an adapter we sell these and it puts it right where you want to want it to be so uh, again <clears throat> for these when you thread it in you're going to want to use thread tape and a little thread sealant on here very very little thread sealant and go ahead and torque that in. That's the only fitting that you'll need to use the thread tape on. Again on this side it's the same kind of thing. Uh, we've got the same type fittings that we had on the pump. Now on this one we're gonna go ahead and use our harder tubing, the white tubing. This is stiffer so this is what's gonna go from the pump to the uh, injection check valve okay so this stiffer tubing is a little harder to go on there so I just ran some hot water over it again go ahead and put your cap on first threads facing out and as you can see I've got that all the way up against that shoulder there you make want to make you want to make sure you kind of hold that there while you're tightening this down again this just needs to be hand tight and it's important that you get a good seal on them okay so we attach that end and we'll go ahead and attach this other end here to the pump and this is going to be the outlet and they're they're labeled right here so again you warm these up a little bit they kind of slide on there and you kind of want to help Hold them on there. The first thing, if your pump doesn't prime, the first thing you're going to want to check is these fittings because they, if you're leaking air through there, the pump won't prime. All right, so we have everything hooked up, all of our connections. Uh, I've gone ahead and placed four gallons of clean water in the tank. Uh, I do want to mention you don't want to use raw well water in these tanks. You want to use either uh, RO water or soft water, something that's been distilled cleaned. So anyway, I've got four gallons of water in here. I can see our foot valve down there is below the surface. You don't want to put any chlorine or peroxide in here yet because we want to go ahead and prime it and do a leak check on it. So the first thing we're going to do is plug in the pump. And it should come up to 100%. Uh, if it doesn't, uh, you can use these arrows to adjust them up. And the first thing is you go ahead and turn it on and it's going to make that ka-chunk sound. So what we're going to do here is we're going to open this about a half a turn three quarters of a turn and what that's going to do is allow us to prime the pump now I can actually see water coming up the tube here pretty soon you'll start to see it over here coming out this part and you'll also hear that pump change that means you're, you're primed so I'm going to go ahead and turn this back just leave this open about a quarter of a turn what this does is it allows uh, the pump helps the pump stay primed so you want this just cracked a little bit here and as you can see we're getting water through there and we'll let that run for a couple minutes and pretty soon you'll notice there's no more air bubbles in there and that's when you have a solid prime so you can see there's no more air bubbles in here you've got just a little dribble of water coming out this hose this guy's uh, kind of shaking a little violently there that's a good sign that means you're, you're primed so go ahead and let that run for about an hour just to make sure, double check all your fittings to make sure none of them are leaking. 
Um, and then what you can go ahead and do is add your chlorine or your peroxide, uh, add another gallon of water, uh, go ahead and follow the startup guide. Um, at that point, once you get your solution in there, you're going to go ahead and adjust this down to 50%. And 50% is about where you're going to want to be if your well um, is producing between 5 and 15 gallons a minute. So set that at 50%. Go ahead and run it for a bit, and then go ahead and, and per your startup guide, uh, check your free chlorine. Uh, get that somewhere between 0.2 and 0.4 ppm, and uh, you will be good to go. And a couple other things I wanted to note. Uh, first of all, if you do adjust the speed here, once you adjust it, wait 15, 20 seconds for it to set. Uh, it won't hold it into memory if you don't. Um, if you were like to unplug it or shut the power off now. Uh, it would go back to the 100% if you don't wait that 15 seconds. All right, thanks, folks.